Wayne Thiebaud is one of the giants of our generation of artists. His subjects are things we all know and we all see. You know, every time you go into a diner and you see the, the little stands of pies and cakes and that sort of thing, I mean, that's what we're looking at when we see Thiebaud's pictures. But there's always something a little bit off about each of them. The compositions um, are classically arranged. They're incredible geometries. So there's almost as much um, sort of rigor in terms of the way he sets up what he's going to paint, whether it's a row of pies or cakes, five hot dogs sitting on a table. And then he gives us a viewpoint that's not what we would actually probably be seeing when we were out in the world. But this is something that's really characteristic of so much of Thiebaud's work. He'll show a slot machine, but he shows it to us as though almost from the vantage point of a little kid, we're not looking down on it, we're looking either straight across or slightly up at it, so it transfers the relationship that we know between ourselves and an object or our sense of our normal spatial relationships into something that's different. And so it gives us this sort of double take, almost an immediate reaction that makes us go back and have a second look and try to figure out what is so magic about what he's painting. There's a huge amount of wit in what he did. I mean, he worked for a while. In fact, when he was a kid in high school even, he decided that he wanted to be an illustrator or a cartoonist. And when he was in the Air Force during World War II, he actually did illustrations and cartoons for the base magazine. He ran a cartoon strip. I mean, he has this sort of innate, ingrained wit. And it comes across really in the paintings. He continued on in the 60s doing other kinds of landscapes. And he started doing these amazing sort of vertiginous landscapes of San Francisco, you know, where the San Francisco is hilly. The, the roads go like this and you get to the top of a hill and you look down and you actually can't quite see the bottom of the hill where your car is going to drive. And he picks up on that and flattens out the space some. So when you're looking at these pictures, on one hand you feel like it's an aerial view, you're up in an airplane looking down on, the, on a landscape, but you're also, it's also as though you're looking at it sideways. So you'll see a street or a series of streets with buildings that look like they're going straight up into the sky. So it's what San Francisco looks like, but it's more. It's intensified. It's sort of condensed into a slightly more dramatic way of seeing what we see. Everything is intentional. There's nothing accidental in his pictures. It's all there. The color contrasts, the subtle, very, very, very thin lines by a swash of really rich, kind of dense, juicy paint. All of it's intentional. He thinks it all through, but when he actually manipulates the paint, determines the size of the canvas, there's a huge amount of just simple human intuition and visual experience that comes to bear on how the images end up looking in the final analysis.